Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffrey Harris, your friendly neighborhood host at the 411 Wrestling Interviews Podcast. Okay, so for this week, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. I was at the Impact Wrestling Media Day session at Axis TV Studios, and we uh, talked to some of the Impact Wrestling stars and staff in some roundtable-style interviews. So we're going to be uh, rolling out these roundtable interviews to you. Uh, first up is Jimmy Jacobs, who is uh, the head of uh, Impact Wrestling Creative. Uh, he used to work at WWE. He's a former uh, Ring of Honor wrestler and superstar. So it's great to hear him talk about his time in Ring of Honor, coming up with the, the Lacey storyline, the Age of the Fall, which he worked on with Tyler Black, now WWE Universal Champion. Seth Rollins, why he got fired from uh, WWE, and all that great stuff. So uh, please look forward to that, and you're listening to the 411 Wrestling Interviews Podcast. We were young back then. You're still young. You're still young, yeah. yeah. 35, it's not too bad. It's better than not getting old, you know? It's like the alternative is just yeah. so, Which is going to happen, so is it... Uh, so far as we know, yeah, something, something that we, we think is death or, or call death, you know, is death, whether that's, whether that's the, you know, the lights just go out and that's it, which is a good possibility, or there's something else, you know, there's another uh, way of, uh, you know, having your specific consciousness, not sure, reincarnation could be, uh, also, it could be, you could go to... Just another, basically a dimension, another universe. I mean, I've been, have you been to another dimension before? Me, no. No? I've, I've heard things, though. It's crazy, man. It's, it's wild. It's like, you know. I feel like I dreamed about this day before it happened. Yeah, a absolutely. You know, pre, pre, uh, what do they call that? Pre -cognition? pre cognition? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, man. Like, it's funny because we think we think we know things, and we think everything is what it seems, and we think just like we assume that like oh, th just what I see and what I know, and science tells us is everything. It's like yeah, you think that's everything. Like, the human eye can see 0.0035 percent of the electromagnetic spectrum. So even what we're seeing right now is like a tiny, 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 tiny fraction of like what's going on around us. And you think that like what you see is what you is what's happening. It's like, get the fuck out of here, man. So like, there's, there's, there's so much going on here that you have no concept of. I don't have a concept the, of. The Lacey song. Did yeah. You, did you write that yeah, song? Yeah, man. Me and my buddy Vince. That was... Oh, man, that was yeah. that was a great mo that was a great moment, for it, you. dude. It was hard because, like, um, as as the story goes, you know, I was wrestling for Ring of Honor and uh, kind of floundering at that point, and we just started this love storyline with Lacey, and I called Gabe. I was like kind of drunk one night I called Gabe and I was like hey man I, I need something I'm dying here and Gabe just like he like buried me he was just like look man but basically like, we, we tried with you with the tagging travels with you and BJ it didn't really get over and you know you know you, you don't have matches that sell DVDs and just really like kind of like let me let me have it which which is good you know because you need to hear these things you need you're the, the guy to be honest with you right and um it's like, well, let, let me just do something. Let me, you know, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll send you something. I don't know, like a, something for Lacey, like a poem, a song. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. He's like, we're going to do a match with you and BJ in Detroit. And we'll see what happens. But, like, had, for all intents and purposes, given up on me. And then I, uh, I went to my buddy Vince. We were in a band together in high school. And we wrote the song. And my other friend, we recorded it. We, we, we shot the music video. And once it was all done, I was like, I think this is it. I think this is the thing. And when Gabe saw that, he was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. And he booked me for I mean, that point on. at the time, I thought you were one of the, the better guys oh, thanks, man. On, on the roster. Yeah. But, um, the, the age of the, do you remember the age of the fall? Of course I remember age of the fall. So, like, where, like, who was handling the creative side? Uh, I mean, that, that was, that, from? that was me, uh, Gabe, and, and, and Seth, you know, Tyler Black at the time, Seth Rollins now, um, we had this over the summer of 2007. We just had this email chain going of like the three of us talking about all sorts of different. First, it was me and Gabe, and then once once uh, Seth came in on it, um, he 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 came up with the name Age of the Fall. Uh, you know, yeah, he was really in. Coley was really in tune. Seth Colby, Tyler was really in tune with uh, what what's going on. He's you know he was a young kid at that time. I mean, look, do you remember that moment where where you had the guy hanging over you and the blood? Oh, yeah. That man, what just what? 
Yeah, what an, I don't know if you could do something like that today. But I don't think I don't you could. Know. I don't think we, we, should, we probably should have done it uh, just, 12 you know. years ago. Uh, it was, I, at the time, I didn't think anything of it. And looking back at now, I was like, oh, that was horrific. That was like, I mean, I thought it was a cool way to debut. I was like, that was super cool. Uh, but that was where it, you know, that, where it ended. And uh, Gabe has gone on since say that was one of the angles he like regrets doing. Like, yeah, in a way, or, or wouldn't do it again, or, or something like that. Because it was, it, was, it was really, that was really, yeah. Something. I think it was one of those rare moments, though, but um, did, you, did you like working with Gabe Sapolsky? I loved was working with Gabe. Guy? I loved working with Gabe. Uh, once he was on board with me, you know, for, okay. the, first, for the first few years, like, like I just, I wasn't his guy at all. I was doing the Huss thing, and it got crowd reactions, and so I think he, you know, I was good, I was good enough in the ring, and it got crowd reactions, so he kept me around, like, you know, part-time, tried the tag team titles. It wasn't until the, the battle of Lacey, and we started the whole story as me and Lacey, that he and I were just like, we would collaborate all the time, and we worked together really closely, and uh, I, I really enjoyed working together. I don't know if you've been following this story at all, but... Um... You know, one of the one of the old ROH guys, CM Punk. Yeah. He went on the Collider Live and he said the rumors are true. I went over to Fox Sports to try out for WWE backstage for Fox Sports, and apparently it would only be through Fox. Like to me, that's just the fact that he did that alone. And even if he doesn't get that gig, is mind blowing. But what do you think? Like to hear that. Uh, what what part about it do you feel is mind blowing? That he went to for a screen test for a WWE show. Um, but I mean, it's pro wrestling, you know? It's like, I feel, sometimes I feel like stuff you would never imagine. With. Like Punk coming back to the yeah. WWE? Like, who knows, man? It's like, you know, it's only never until it happens. Right. And that's just, that's just how it is. Uh, you know, he put a lot of time in WWE, left, you know, obviously very damaged, damaged a lot of ways he felt about uh, wrestling and WWE, but you know, if the day comes where he wants to come back, he'll come back. Because, you know, it, it, would, it would get a huge reaction. He'd make a ton of money. Like, it's, look, it's not fun working there sometimes. But, like, it, but it is fun. And doing it's fun. And wrestling's fun. It's just, like, if he wants to play, he'll play. Were you ever close or friendly with Punk? Uh, I mean, Punk helped get me my job at Ring of Honor. I've known Punk since I was 16 years old. And, uh, we were... We were never like friends. Friendly, you know. I went. I went to his place after he won the Money in the Bank. Not Money in the Bank. Yeah, at Money in the Bank. Was it him and uh, Cena? Money in the Bank. It was Money in the Bank. Yeah, it was, it was Cena in, in, in Chicago. Yep. Oh right. In Chicago, we put the, the, the title in the in the, uh, in the refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I was at his house then, and um, so like we're, we're we're friendly. I'm spoken to him really in, it's been a few years I texted him what, not too long ago a little bit but, is, uh, is the rumor true that when he when he left WWE he like he like erased his contacts and didn't want to associate himself with anyone there anymore I, I don't know I, I heard that it wouldn't surprise me I mean he left on a, on a Monday because he was he was done with it right and I and being there I could see it I could see how he had he was hitting up his head up against a brick wall uh, and just for, for so long and then just on a Monday going like you know what I'm out that's it I'm good. I've been on the road for the last, like, whatever, 15 years, and I'm working for a crazy man, and I just, it's done. It's done. Like, of, t of course I can see how that would happen. Now, for you, did it ever, were you ever hitting your head on a brick wall? Um, at the WWE? Yeah. yeah. No, because, uh, I want to say I didn't care, but just, like, I wasn't, I don't have that same, like, drive that, that the guy like Punk does, where I need to do this, or need to be on top, or need to whatever, I don't need anything. Um, it was frustrating working there. There, uh, in certain ways, uh, it, it did not uh, help my confidence working there a lot. You know, by the last few months I was there, I felt like you barely put a sentence together in front of the crazy man. You know, it just uh, it was it was difficult sometimes. It's not a it's not it wasn't an environment that seems to be conducive to um, to growth, to creativity, to people feeling good about themselves, to confidence, all that sort of stuff. I mean, all, all these people are. Uh, they tend to be sort of demoralized there. Now, sometimes I hear rumors that, like, there'll be the creative team will put a script together for Raw, and then Vince will come in and just tear it up and yeah, just... Sure. Of course. Is that true? Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. That's, that. like, when, when you say that's a rumor, it's like, no, that's, that's like, okay. I don't say it's every week. It's like, yeah, it's like, you go there, and everything, you, God, it's just words on paper. Everything is up for, nothing's off the table. 
you know, so when you go into that production meeting, you know, somebody might say, ah, you know, sir, I don't know if we should do this. Ah, good point. And then that's changed. And, that, and so nothing's off the table. And so everything can be changed. It's just a matter of how much has changed. And sometimes, sometimes it is a lot. Sometimes like, oh man, this, he, he, he blew up this entire show, you know, and we got to scramble to put this together. Now, from your perspective, because you've been on like both sides of it, I mean, you're a wrestler too, so I'm just yeah. curious, do you have, I'm curious, your perspective, do you like, do you like scripted, do you do you think it should be more bullet points and kind of let yourself feel your way through it, how do you see Yeah, so, so, so probably, probably a little more bullet points, Pro- probably, here's the thing though, when people talk about like, you know, scripted promos and whatnot, it's like... You can say, yeah, scripted promos suck, and sometimes, sometimes they do, and sometimes it's not good. Uh, but you've never had to go out there on a seg one promo and have to be out there for 15 or 16 minutes and have, have to come up with words to say. Like, there's very few guys that and, and doing that every week, not just, like, a, a, not just once or twice. It's like every week you're Seth Rollins, and you're going out there, and you're cutting a promo. Then Stephanie comes in, and Hunter comes in, and this happens, and this happens. Like, what, you're, you're telling me you just want to go and wing that? Tell me you just want to like, you know, say like a bullet point here, a bullet point there. It's like, I don't know about that, man. And I don't know how many wrestlers would want to do that. I mean, for, for the most part, uh, I, I would say the wrestlers there were, they appreciate the help. I wouldn't want to go out there and not know what I'm going to say with so many moving parts every single week. You know, Jericho just did this, uh, uh, this, uh, promo on, on AEW this week. And Jer- Jericho, one of the best promos, you know, ever. And so, yeah, cool, fine. You give him a microphone for, for, for I don't know how long the segment was. I don't think it was that long. Maybe seven eight minutes. minutes, eight minutes. Right. So, you know, which is some time, but not, a, you know, it's not 16 but minutes, right? But how many people other than Jericho could probably do that? So, know? right. So, if, if, if there's people in WWE, I would say, uh, have the gift to go just go. I mean, you're talking about guys like uh, Kevin Owens, probably John Cena, although John Cena scripts all the stuff. Um, John, John Moxley, when he was there, you know, even here, it was like, you know, uh, like Austin Aries could have done that. Uh, Eli Drake could have done that. Um, you know, uh, uh, Ty has gotten to the point where she just, her character, she knows her character so well that she can, you know, do that in short promos at least. And uh, But the, the skill of going off the top of your head and just cutting a promo for, you know, 10 minutes or, 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 or an intricate promo with different people for, for 15 minutes and just like, oh, just do it. It's like, out, man. I, I think, like, Joe is one of, like, the most underrated promos out there. Great. Because I love listening to Joe because... He normally doesn't yell and scream. Mm-hmm. He normally just talks in a very level kind of... Very concise. Yeah, and, and, and I, lo- I love that too. Yeah, man. I, I wish you were... I don't know if I wish more guys, but I, I, I appreciate that style too. So yeah, so I mean basically it's like it's like this. Life is made up of balance, right? I mean it is. It is made up of balance. Uh, good, bad, black, white, you know, chaos and order. The yin, the yang, the, the, uh, the known, the unknown. And so the answer inevitably lies somewhere in the middle. The, the answer inevitably lies in somewhere in... And guys uh, need to kind of know what to say, but also put themselves into it and be free to say more than just what's on paper, the known, the unknown, right? Have you ever sneezed in front of Vince McMahon? Yeah, yes. What happened? Yes, yes. So I heard the rumors, right? I heard the rumors. And so for for a long time, I just, I mean, I would stuff a sneeze in front of him. I remember being in a room, you know, slightly bigger than this table, and we're going over stuff. And I'd like, you know, just stuff it, right? And you don't know that you can stuff a sneeze until you're in front of Vince McMahon. You go, I I can't sneeze in front of him, right? And then uh, the first time I saw somebody sneeze in front of him was, was, was Hunter. Triple H, and they're at a table, and uh, Hunter's on one end, and Vince's on the other end, and Hunter sneezes, <laughs> and then Vince just goes, oh, God, and he does this, he, like, pulls down this, like, imaginary, like, <laughs> like curtain or something, or, like, you know, is this, this protective shield to, like, uh, you know, keep him, keep the germs away from him, it's like, oh, God, just pulled it down, right, and so fast forward, it was towards the end of my time there. And I'm sitting there. I'm sitting like next to Adam Pierce in the in the production meeting, and I sneeze. I, I tried to stuff it, but it came out. It wasn't like a whole, but it, it came out. And Vince just goes, Ah, oh, God. 
at him. You might want to you know, put your shield down. Like, like I, you know, I, crazy I, 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 I just can't get out of my head that, that, <laughs> that sort of mock invasion that they did on Being the Elite yeah. and that photo on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And then WWE puts NXT on Wednesday night opposite AEW. Is, is there any kind of – is that a petty move or is that like – are they trying to show up and stick it to uh, AEW at all? Or I like, mean, what, it, what, what is the logic? Hard to say because I'm not in the room when, it, when they come up with it. I mean, it, it's probably a couple fold. It's, pro, it's probably to try to, to put a squash on it to an extent. But like – Probably also to, to drive competition, you know? I mean, you got to think, right? You got to think, why else would they go on Wednesday nights at the same time? It's like the Monday Night Wars were such, you know, were good, was good for everybody. And so, you know, maybe, maybe this will be good for everybody. Maybe that's the thought. I mean, cert- I'll say this. Certainly they're, I don't say scared of them, but certainly, like, they care, right? They're taking, you know, AEW shirts off of people in the front row at uh, Raws and TVs and all that shit. I thought what happened to you was ridiculous. Yeah, it was, with it was tweet. absolutely fine. But, yeah. but like, do you, were they looking, do you think they were looking for an excuse to no. get rid of you? No, absolutely not. No, I was good at my job. I was very good at my job. Um, uh, I, I don't know the exact, like, how I got fired, like, who told Vince, what Vince's take on it was. Um, my guess um, is... Vince saw it as a symptom of what he thought about me. I think otherwise was that like, like I'm a little eccentric or whatever. And I tried. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Uh, Vince did not get me. Certainly, you know, he used to make fun of my uh, ties or my jackets or whatever it was. Like, God, is that a purse? You know, that sort of thing. Um, so my my guess is, you know, it's like, God, oh, we can't have these writers trying to get themselves over. He's got to go. That's my guess. So when, when I've heard people say, oh, there, there was other things too, it's like, it's like not really, like, cert, like I would, I was not in any danger of getting fired there for, you know, even close. This was, this was definitely it. Now, but, I, but, but I guess if Vince thought I was the second coming of Jesus, he would have kept me around. Now, I got I to gotta ask, after that whole thing with being the elite, and, and you know, now you're with Impact, yeah. are, you, are you locked up with yeah, Impact, or did the, did the Bucks ever try to give you a call? Uh, dude, here's the thing, man. I, I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing here. I've been here for like two years now. I like the people I work with. I like the people I, I, I work for. Like, I, I, I like a lot of it. Um, and I don't... What AEW is raised to be seen, there's a lot of people with their hands in that pot, right? You got the Bucks, you got Cody, you got Cody's wife, you got, uh, you got Brandy, you got, uh, you got Trudy Khan, you got Kenny Omega, you got Chris Jericho, you got uh, you know, Jim Ross is like a, some sort of consultant in there too. But I, as far as like cr- creative, you know, like, so, so it's like, okay. Do, do you even want to, like, stick your head in there and go, hey, guys, what about... It's like... It remains to be seen what that is, man. And, and uh, the first two shows, that, you know, they drew some ratings, and I think that's great, man. I, I think AEW's awesome. Dude, like, I'm, just, I'm so happy for the Bucks. I'm so proud of them. Like, to see that, like, that come to fruition. Um, but... They're going to run the show. They're going to run the show. But did Matt and Nick ever call you and say, hey, come on over, work with us? Uh, no. no. I, I, I talked to Matt about it, but I, no, there's never, like, uh, I mean, this is, this is a long time ago. Like, in the last months, I haven't talked to him about it. No. So what does um, head writer for Impact Wrestling, what, what does that kind of connotate? Because as we've seen in WWE, they have head writers for Raw and SmackDown, but ultimately they all to answer to Vince McMahon. And then yeah, Vince Russo was kind of autonomous in his role back in the day. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if, if a head writer is the, the title for me or not. Uh, but it's, it's me, Scott Moore, Don Callis. Uh, Tommy Dreamer and now Robert Evans. Uh, do you know Robert Evans? Do you know Robert Evans? Artie Evans. Artie Evans, yeah. yeah. yeah he, he's on board now, which I'm super happy about because I think he's great. Um, so, uh, you know, Scott's an EVP, Don's an EVP. Uh, so a lot of, so some of the creative stuff, you know, comes comes on my plate. Some of the, you know, putting the scripts together and that sort of stuff. I think technically, I think Don is the, the head of creative. Uh, but as far as like writing it goes, I mean, if you want to call me the head writer, you could, but uh, I don't know if that's that's cool. That's cool about Robert. Um, have yeah. you guys ever like commiserated over like how you guys get fired from WWE? Robert did not get fired. Robert quit. 
Robert, okay. Robert, Robert, Robert the, like the Dream, okay. uh, that's, uh, quit in Gorilla to Vince McMahon's face. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> the, the story was, you know, he got fired of the Hall of Fame. No, he quit. He quit. Okay. Quit the Hall of Fame. Nice. Uh, and it's not exactly my story to tell. But yeah, sure. it, it was, it was, you know, Vince. Yeah. I quit. I mean, it's like, yes, dude. That's what everybody dreams of. Nice. Uh, so yeah, he's great. No, but like, honestly, like I helped him get his job in, in WWE. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like starting to write on comics or something. I was writing for WWE. And I said, oh, if you ever want to come over here, you, know, you, you let me know. And uh, I was like, I just, as I told him, I, like, I just want somebody else from our world to see what I've seen. And he did. He got, he got to see, got to yeah. see exactly what I saw. And we, we do, we talk about it. We just go like, yeah, it's fucking crazy, right? And, because uh, it is crazy. Unless, unless you've been in that room, you have no idea. Sure. Uh, Jimmy, I think this Axis TV move was a major power Great. move. Great, yeah. So, but like, for you, is, is it a major wave of relief in the guys uh, in the back? Like, I, I think as a company as a whole, like, because the, the big issue over the last year, I don't think it had to do with the quality of the, the, the work or anything like that. It's like, we were putting on a good show with good stories and good wrestlers all that sort of stuff but like nobody's seeing it if a tree falls in the forest man and uh so having a platform where like keep more eyeballs can be on our product i think is what everybody is looking for um do you think synergy and co-promotion because impact's been doing some of that lately do you think it will continue um going forward on impact and not maybe not just with Access TV ha- has WoW in New Japan, but like, yep. could could the co promote like you guys did Reality of Wrestling with Booker T a while back? Yep. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, do you think efforts like that could uh, continue? I, I'm, I'm sure they will. I'm sure. Um, I, I think if there's, if there's something that like the the wrestling business, I think as a whole, has sort of learned over the last handful of years, at least, is that like. It's like we're not the enemies with each other. It's like we're all just people in the same business doing the same sort of stuff. And like, if, if something is mutually beneficial, then like, yeah, do it. Okay, you know? MLW. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, it, it's above my pay grade as far as like, you know, who we work with or what we do. I mean, like, I'm of the opinion. Hypothetically, hypothetically, would you like to work with those guys? Uh, you know? Dude, I've I've seen zero at all. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I see some of the talent they have, and some of the talent they have is good. I, I I've probably met Court a couple times in my life. Yeah, I don't. I've, n- I've never seen the show. So. Do you happen to catch the uh, new NWA show that just came out? I did. I heard it was good though. It's um, it's really like a shot for shot throwback with yeah. like HD cameras. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, what, high I, production value. I values. saw maybe weird, like an Eddie like, Kingston promo, and that's what it looked yeah. like. Yeah. Like, oh, great, you know. And if that's yeah, man, if that's the brand that works for them, it's like, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, it's all about it. Do you think Billy Corgan has a good mind for this business? He had a previous association. I've never, I've never really talked. Uh, I've never talked wrestling with Billy. I, I don't know Billy well enough to, to say whether he does wrestling. I mean, I mean, clearly, you know, what they're doing in NWA and have for the last few years, it's like, it's been slow, but it's been steady. It's been clever. It's been creative. You know, him and Dave Lagana have been, have been doing it. So it's like, you know, better than it was. So, you know, there's something there, right? I've talked with a couple of the guys about doing doing a show out in the courtyard out here for LA Live. Could you? Would you? I think that would be a great atmosphere. Do you ever envision things like that about where the show is? When you're, when you're I, I, I I don't. Okay. I don't. I'm a I'm a guy that puts the characters in places and you know makes them do that makes the characters do certain things and make certain choices to try to get the characters over with the people and hopefully. Do, do you think what happened, happened with you? Um, influence Chris Jericho splitting off from WWE. No. He seemed to be a big proponent for you. Yeah, man. We, you know, Chris and I worked together like basically his whole run back at uh, WWE. Base, base his whole run back at WWE. And uh, yeah, man. I mean, the, the whole the list of Jericho and all that stuff. And, yeah, man, we, it was great. Chris is awesome. Is there a storyline or character you're most proud of uh, with what you've done so far in Impact? At Impact, I mean, the. Like my 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 fingerprints are, are all over the shows, right? So it's um, it's hard to say, oh, this is this is me, this is mine, or whatever. Um, but uh, the one I enjoyed the most, maybe not everybody's cup of tea, was the Undead Realm stuff, and uh, that was like my my conception from beginning to end, and uh, just the one we did at Bonfire Glory last year, and the uh, Undead Realm two we did this year, where uh, where Allie died and. Yeah. Like, I loved it. It was one of those things, like, if you're a fan and you didn't want to go on the ride, you thought it sucked. 
but I think if you were at least willing to go on the ride, like, yeah, I'll see where this is going to take me, I think, I think those people liked it. The people that wanted to go on the ride, they thought it was great. And, uh, you know, the, the alley death scene is like one of my favorite things we've done. Like when she's, when she's down there and got, we got a great production team and they, uh, they, they, they got this like great song in the background, this like piano song. It's like, when it's time to die, bum bum. But this great song, and you know, Rosemary and Allie are, are legit like best friends. And this is this is we're, we're really killing Allie off. This is it. This is her last day of the company. Um, and Rosemary's just completely in in the moment, and she's just like she's crying there. And I'm watching this, and like like the first like probably ten times I watched it, I go like I'm like watered, like teary eyed. It's like I mean, now that you good. guys have access to the access. So, yeah, the accent. Do you think that will help you guys out production-wise with doing new, new and different things? I hope so, man. You know, and it's it's a matter of what, uh, like I said, the the um, the final calls are not mine. I would love to do Undead Realm three. I'd love to do Undead Realm Championship Wrestling, and uh, you know, do it every day on a, every once a week or once a month. We're doing some fun things. We got um. We're doing a retro show on October 27th, and that'll be on, I think, on our TV or, or something at some point. Uh, but, like, basically like an 80s throwback show, uh, which I think is going to be super fun. It was super fun to start to put together and just, you know. Uh, so I think we're going to do some, some different things like that, some things that, like, and we get to do those things, and WB's not going to, and AEW's not going to, and Ring of Honor's not going to, and NXT sure as hell ain't going to do anything that, like, takes a wink at wrestling or goes beyond the you know the squared circle or beyond you know something know, something crazy something silly now um for your creative method do, do you believe in sort of like that idea like think of the end point think of the goal sure. work backwards yeah. do you like to yes. mix it up a little absolutely okay. yeah it's, it's like you i mean not always but life's made balanced right so sometimes you do it differently but uh yeah you figure out kind of like the end point like where we're trying to get to and you know and then you you, you sort of work backwards like all right how are we gonna get there more or less can you kind of um, compare and contrast what it's been like to work for three, like um, between Vince McMahon, Gabe Sapolsky, and then now Scott and Don? Um, with with Gabe, it was very co collaborative, but I was a talent then, so I only had to do things you know that were about me, and so I had the luxury of basically like like coming up with creative stuff in in my bubble, right? In, in just like Jimmy Jacobs' world, and what what's good for my story, and what what should we do? Um, when you start to write TV, you start to realize how how much how like you how hard it is to write in a bubble, like like so many other things are going on <laughs> that I'm surprised me and Gabe were able to do a lot of the stuff that like I helped him come up with because like there's so many other moving parts that like you know just because this works great for, for me doesn't it means well they actually gotta worry about this guy first and this guy first and this guy first and actually we can't do this with you because we gotta pull this guy here and do this and whatever it's all, it's all a big Rubik's Cube once you move one part everything else is there, right? Uh, so so that was that with, with, with uh, at WB it was great the writers were great man so many awesome like creative guys, creative on all different levels. So there were guys like guys that were like you know, you know, funny. There were guys that you know could tell good stories. Guys that were good writers. Guys who come out of box ideas. Everybody had like their thing that they were yeah. good at, man. And there's so many you know, great, great dudes and really creative people there. Uh, but ultimately, it, it's, it's Vince's show, and uh, Vince is. You know, it's his show, man. It's his the sandbox. You're just playing in it. And so you get to learn to not be married to any of the stuff you come up with. You go, you stop thinking in terms of, hey, what's going to be the best? And you start thinking in terms of, what's the, what's the crazy man, you know, not going to yell it out? Um, and it's like, that's, do you think there's value in that? What's that? Not being married to your ideas? Oh, of course. Yeah, you shouldn't be married to anything in life. Maybe your marriage, I don't know. But like, yeah, yeah. Attachment is the root of all suffering, right? Yeah. So it's like, once you, once you let go of everything, not, feel, feel like, okay, nothing needs to be the way it is, and nothing needs, everything's just my preference, and my preferences actually don't really mean anything. Uh, the fact that I get to live is really what, you know, that's the meaning of life, is living. And so the preferences are just like, just like who cares? It's like preferences. Not a matter of like that. It's not really serious. Uh, so, so yes, that. And look, it's, it's Vince's it's Vince's world and he gets to run it once I'm a billionaire and I have my own wrestling company I can run it however I want so I'm not saying this in like a that's bad way because it's like 
It's his show. Somebody has to make the final call. Um, would I run it like that? No, but that's but it's not my show. And that's my mantra around. That, that, that's my mantra in basically in life. It's, it's not my show. Dude. If it's my show, I do it like this, this, and this. But it's not my show. It's my job to come up with the best ideas I can come up with. And if he says yes, if he says no, whatever, right? So, so that it, it becomes a point where you're not trying to come up with the best thing, and you're just it becomes a point where you're just worried he's going to yell at you about any sort of like idea you have. So it just shuts down uh, conversation, and people just go, okay, let's just try to come up with, let's just try to get into Vince's brain. So basically, it's your job to be a mind reader of a crazy billionaire senior citizen. So uh, that's that's difficult sometimes, as you as you might be able to imagine. And impact, dude, it's like we don't always see eye to eye on things. You know, me and uh, I'm in a different generation, kind of like Don and and uh, and Scott. We see things differently sometimes, but there's absolutely merit in the ways that they see things. Like some things don't need to be my way at all. Uh, but most of all, it's fine to say whatever you want. It's fine to pitch whatever you want. And even sometimes at TV, when I produce things, sometimes it's like Scott's like, yeah, that's not how I would have done it. And, but it's not like the end of the world. It's just like, all right, cool. I'll remember that next time. But it's not like, you know, you're not living in fear of like getting fired because like you made a choice. Like you have to make a choice here, which is great. And then, like I said, we get to, we get to, we get to pitch anything. We converse about it all. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a an environment that um, that helps facilitate like creativity and, and openness, right? So, Jimmy, yeah. this is such a bizarre business. Like, yeah. you, have, you have to be both like a sports star, a sports athlete, and and like a movie star. Basically. Something like that, right? It demands so much of you, and you've been a part of this business like for the better part of two decades. Yep. So, like, what is the key to kind of, I guess, surviving this business? Not letting it drive you crazy and not letting it consume. You. <laughs> yeah, that's and the like because you seem you seem like a very just intelligent, like you know, easygoing, just you know, cool guy. So I'm just you seem you seem or you. Well, I get the, that sense from you. So, like, what is the how do how do you remain giving me? I'll, I'll say for, for me, for me, uh, I'm not obsessed with wrestling anymore. Right. It's not this driving force in my life where it's like, ah, oh, it's got to be like this. And some people are like that. Sometimes that leads you to success, but sometimes that sort of driven, like, oh, I got to get this thing, this thing, this this thing, also leads you to go to Raw on Monday and go, hey, I quit, I'm out, and then you know. They disappear for however long Punk's been gone for, right? Because uh, that's, you know, that will drive you mad. It will drive you mad to go, I just need to main event WrestleMania. I need to get the world title. I need to get this. It will lead you maybe to, maybe to success, but what is success? And that's the thing you have to look at in your life and go, what does success mean? What's what's at the end of my dream? And you know what I figured out at the end of your dream? You know what I figured out? You. That's it. The same the same you. It's just like, hey, there you are. Nothing is waiting for you. There's no grand prize. There's no there's no thing to go, oh, now I'm fulfilled. Now I'm content. I was talking to I Seth Rollins on my podcast a couple weeks ago and we were talking about it. He's like, Yeah, once I won the world title, I realized, oh, this isn't it. I'm like, Yep, fucking damn right it's not it. It doesn't matter. And you can keep going, you can keep climbing that mountain, you can try to, you know, say, Oh, maybe it's the world title, maybe it's maybe WrestleMania, maybe it's going being a movie star, maybe it's making billions of dollars. You can think it's whatever you want but I promise you at the end of it it's just what's the next thing and at some point you go okay wait a minute if it's not this thing and it wasn't the next thing and it wasn't the next thing or the thing after that or the thing after that or the thing after that, or the thing after that then what the hell is it and I figured out what it is and so that's what keeps me that's a very interesting perspective because you know I wonder about like you know success in the business and some guys like would say being WWE champion main eventing Wrestlemania but like I look at a guy like Orange Cassidy and I'm like this guy ha like Orange Cassidy has something that I can't I can't put my finger on and explain but he has something and I'm like well I don't ever really think Orange Cassidy is going to be in the main event at yeah, WrestleMania, right. but like, to say that guy's not successful, I mean, are, I mean, is he really not successful at this point? I mean, Here, here's what I learned. I think there are very, like, you can define success in very different ways. Right. Uh, to, to what, what, you were what, what you think success is has, has nothing to do with me. And I learned that after I got fired from WWE when I was having the time of my fucking life, like the most fun I had in my wrestling career, like by a long shot. 
by so much and like thinking that like wait a minute WWE is supposed to be the measure of success, but I'm having the best time of my life and making more money doing it over here. Well, fuck the money, who cares, right? But like, it's like this is like this is way better for me over here. Oh, so it's not WWE. Of course, like, and of course it's not. Of course, like, here's the thing. Of course it's not anything. Of, of course, like success. Success isn't anything. The, 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 the thing you the, the thing you think is the thing isn't the thing. That's the thing. The thing you think of this thing isn't the thing. Success isn't a thing. Success is, is not success. Success. Is an illusion. It's, it's like everything else is an illusion. Are, are, so it sounds like you're more like stimulated, and you're more like from a creative sense, you're more creatively stimulated. Yeah, it's a better environment to, to exist than absolutely. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, you're all in Spanish, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Do you guys have anything else? Yeah, yeah. What? Actually, this is going back a few years, yeah. but I was a huge fan of Wrestling Society. Hell yeah, man. That was awesome. I got the DVD.